I want to continue our discussion about database transactions by talking to you about ACID. And I'm not talking about the ACID from the 1960s. This is an acronym where the A stands for atomic, C stands for consistent, uh, I stands for isolated or isolation, and D stands for durable. Now the atomic means all or nothing. This is what transactions are all about. So either a, a SQL command goes to completion or it does not. You don't get half an answer. Consistent means the database has enforced all the integrity and data uh, constraints on the tables, making sure the tables are storing nothing but factual information. Isolation means that users, or actually just the sessions, database sessions don't affect each other. So when two sessions go into transactions, they don't see the results of the other transaction until things have been committed. And then durable means that once data is committed or, or saved to the tables, it's permanent. It's not just going to spontaneously uh, disappear, and new data is not going to just spon spontaneously appear. Um, the data is, is unchangeable until someone goes in and actually executes, executes a command that will change it. A uh, database management system that supports all four of these features is said to be ACID compliant. I want to talk to you a bit more about isolation in particular. For example, I want to answer some questions about what happens when two sessions try to alter the same data at the same time, and in fact, what happens when two sessions overlap, and can they overlap? So to answer these questions, I want to run some examples. So let's get these slides out of the way, and we'll bring up our connection to the database here. And we can see that I'm going to use the same um, account database that we were using in the other videos here. So we've got six accounts. Um, in order to show what happens when we have two sessions going, I need to actually have another session. So let's bring that up. And I've colored this window green so that we can keep track of which one is which. And in this one here, we should be able to see exactly the same data. There we go. So, so both uh, database connections are connected to the same database. They can see the same data. Even though they're logged in as the same user, they're treated as two separate sessions. So let's start a transaction in both. So I'll begin one here and begin one here. And then let's do something like, uh, let's insert a new user. So insert into account values. And um, let's choose like 150, user ID 150. Um, maybe this will be Frank. And we'll start Frank off with $500 in the account. And we should now be able to see that. There we go. So Frank has appeared. But what does the green window see? The green window does not see Frank yet because of the isolation. Now if I do a commit over here in the white window, then this one does see it. Now a moment ago I said the transactions were isolated, but in fact what's happening here is that even though both uh, windows were in, um, in transactions and the green window is still in a transaction, uh, it can see the new row now because it doesn't affect what is happening in the green window. In fact, nothing has happened in the green window. All we did was we did a begin, a begin um, nothing else has happened. So if we do a uh, commit over here, and this should make no change at all, then we see that uh, the Frank, Frank's row is there. So let's go into a transaction and in, into both of them again. And this time, let's do something like, let's insert a new row. So maybe this would be 160, and this would be Gina, and we'll start Gina off with $1,000. And then over here, we'll do an insert. Um, let's do 170, uh, Henry, and Henry will start off with 1500. And you can see that both uh, rows went in just fine. If we look to see what's in the database, the green window can see Henry, and the white window can see Gina, but they can't see each other yet. Not until I do a commit in this window. So now we can still only see Gina here, and if we do uh, here, now we can see Gina and Henry because Gina's row does not affect Henry's row, and then we'll do a commit in the green window, and we'll see that the white window now can see both. So they, there is some isolation there. Uh, it's not until the transactions do a commit that the data shows up in the other session. Let's begin a transaction in both of them again. 
And this time I want to do something that's going to affect the same row. So let's do something like an update. Update account set balance equals balance. Um, let's maybe take away $100 from Bob's account, which is 110. Okay. And then over in the green window, let's, let's do another uh, update that's also going to affect row 110. So uh, I know this is kind of a strange transaction for a bank to be doing, but maybe let's take away $200 from uh, uh, where account, here we go, where, I got lost from there, where account number equals 110. And something strange has happened. The green window has locked up apparently. So the, the white window, the, the update seems to have happened. Let's look to see. So in fact, Bob has had $100 taken away from his account, but the green window seems to be kind of locked up. Can't do anything. So at this point, let's do a commit and watch both windows and see what happens. As soon as I hit enter here, the white window does the commit and then the green window was finally able to do its update. So the reason why it was locked up was it, is the row that the white window was updating was locked, preventing the green window from making its changes. But as soon as we did the commit in the white window, the green window was able to uh, do, the, do the update. So let's see what we can see. So it looks like, this is kind of strange here. So Bob, has $700 in one window and $500 in the other window. And the discrepancy is, this is kind of interesting here, the discrepancy is caused by the green window is still in the transaction. So its update, although um, it's sort of taken place, it hasn't yet uh, become permanent. So, well, let's, let's see what happens. We're gonna do a commit over here, and now we can see that they're now synchronized. <clears throat> and then if we go over to the white window, now we can see, yeah, now they're both $500. So what happened was the, the white window did its update, and then it did a commit, and then the green window did, did its update, and then now uh, once we commit both of them, now they're, they're, now they're synchronized. Uh, let's do another one, another example of overlapping transactions. So we'll begin here in both of them. And let's do an update that's going to affect like all the rows. Update account set balance equals balance. Let's say it's the end of the month, so we are going to take five dollars away from all the accounts. Actually, let's take a little bit more than that. Let's take away ten dollars. It's a so it's a little more obvious when when we change the balance here. So um, this this should cause all the balances to go down by ten dollars and. We can see that updates nine rows, so that's basically the whole table. And yes, we can see that uh, accounts have gone down by uh, $10. And let's go over here and let's do something like, um, let's take away, someone's gonna do a $100 withdrawal. Let's, let's take it away from Frank. So Frank is 150. And this one locks up as well. And it's just the same reason as before. The transaction that was going on in the white window, it has locked up all the rows now, and the green window can't do its update until that lock is released. So in order to release that lock, uh, we could do it one of two ways. We could do a commit, and I think you're, you're gonna, we saw a moment ago what's gonna happen there. Let's in fact do a rollback and see what happens. So we're gonna do a rollback. This will cause all the balances to not have $10 taken away from them. And we can see that the green window, was, uh, the lock was released, and now it's able to do its update. And we can look to see that only Frank's account has been affected. All the others have gone back to their original balance. And then we can do a commit over here. And now both windows should be synchronized with each other. And there we go. Okay, so, so transactions are isolated from one another if they're affecting different rows. As soon as transactions try to affect the same rows, then a lock is placed on those rows and the two windows can't proceed simultaneously. What happens is the, um, the, each individual transaction is called serialized. So every operation you do goes into a queue and the database applies them not simultaneously, but one after the other. So the first one that arrives in the queue is the first one that gets to go forward.
if it affects a row that uh, commands behind it are going to affect, then the others have to wait until the lock is released. So, so it's, it's basically a first in, first out. The first one that arrives that tries to change a row is the one that gets priority. As soon as it does a commit or a rollback, then the others are able to proceed and move forward to the database. So the isolation is um, uh, set up so that when, when two transactions happen simultaneously, they don't affect one another. Now, in real life, you're not going to have a transaction that's lasting as long as the ones that we're doing. We, we begin a transaction, and then we leave the transaction running for several seconds to several minutes while we kind of fuss around with the database and type things in by hand. The reality is that transactions last just a fraction of a second. Usually it's, it's some sort of automated process like a script or a, a program that begins a transaction, does its changes, and then does a commit all within a fraction of a second. So you never want to leave that database locked for very long. So that kind of wraps up our discussion of isolation and ACID and transactions. The next video is going to talk about auto commit mode. So join me there.